Hi there and welcome again to Mr. Arnold's Maths. In this video we're going to look at some simultaneous equations. Now I cannot stress how important a topic this is for your GCSE and then for further studies of maths, simultaneous equations are absolutely essential. They come up everywhere. So uh, we're going to make a video today and I'm going to do six examples of how to solve various types of simultaneous equations. So here we have two equations. We've got x plus 2y equals 5 and we got x plus y equals 3 and I'm going to start off by just labeling those equations just so I know which ones we're talking about okay so this one's going to be equation 1 that's going to be equation 2 now looking at both equations here I can see a very important aspect and that is that the coefficient of the x's are the same okay both coefficients are 1 okay there's a 1 in front of this x there's a 1 in front of this x and that means I can do something really, really useful here. So I'm going to draw a little line underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this equation away from this equation. So I'm going to do equation 1 take away equation 2. Okay, and when we do that, we'll find that x take away x, well, they cancel out, they're gone. We do 2y take away y leaves me with y. And 5 take away 3 leaves me with 2. So I now know that y equals 2. And that's a really important step involved in solving these equations. I now know what y is. I can substitute y back in to one of these equations, doesn't matter which one, and I can solve for x. So I'm going to substitute, or for short, I'm going to call it sub. I'm going to sub y equal to 2 into one of the equations. And I'm going to choose the easiest equation to go for. I'm going to go with this one here. I think equation 2 is easier to use. Now, bear in mind, it doesn't matter which one you use. You should get the same answer so long as your calculations are correct. So, what does that tell me? That implies equation 2 now is x plus 2 equals 3, which means that x must be equal to 2 take away 3, which is 1. So, I know the solution to this equation is 1 2. If I was to graph both of these lines, I will find that this line and this line intersect at the point 1, 2. And that's what a simultaneous equation does. It solves the equation of two lines and where they intersect. Right, let's look at the second one. Okay, so we got two more equations here. We got 5x plus 2y equals 12. That's going to be equation 1. And then underneath we've got 3x plus 2y equals 8. That's equation 2. And again, I'm going to draw a little line underneath. And by looking at both equations, I can see straight away that the coefficient, that is the number in front of the variable y, the coefficient of y is the same. It's both 2 here and 2 here. So what I can do is I can take this equation away from this equation. So very, very similar to the last one. I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2, and we end up with, let's see. Okay, so 5x take away 3x leaves me with 2x. 2y take away 2y, they cancel out, which is exactly what we wanted. And 12 take away 8 leaves me with 4. So 2x equals 4. That means that x must be equal to 2. And again, using that value I'm going to substitute so sub x equal to 2 into into which equation would I like to use uh, let's have a look uh, really doesn't matter here and um, I'm going to go with equation 2 I'm going to go with equation 2 because I know my 3 times table better than my 5 times table so let's stick it in there we get 3 times 2 because x is 2 plus 2y is equal to 8. Let's just multiply that out. We get 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2y equals 8. And that means that 2y must be equal to 8, take away 6, which is 2. Therefore, y is equal to 1. So the solution to this equation, or the, this simultaneous equation, is 2, 1. x is 2, y is 1. Okay, third example here. Getting slightly trickier here. Again, let's start by labeling both equations. This is going to be equation 1. This is going to be equation 2. And I'm going to start by drawing my line underneath here. 
as per normal let's have a look at both equations right we got 5x here and 4x here coefficients are not the same so no good trying to eliminate either of those okay 3 and 3 so we have the same coefficients here but however the sign are different so rather than taking one equation away from the other I'm going to add equation 1 and equation 2 if I add them both together the y terms will cancel out which is what we're trying to do here so 5x plus 4x gives me 9x minus 3y plus 3y is 0 so they cancel out which is what we wanted and 1 plus 17 gives us 18 solving for x we get x equals 2 excellent so now we know what x equals so I'm going to substitute x equal to 2 into one of the equations let's have a look which one will we go for uh, again doesn't make a whole lot of difference but I'm going to choose this one because it has positive y here if I have a negative y I'm going to get a negative answer then I got to change it into a positive at the end this one for me is going to take less steps so I'm going to go with equation 2 as I said before it doesn't matter which one you want to use they will both work so that tells me that 4 times x which is 2 4 times x plus 3y is going to give me 17 multiplying out my brackets here 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3y equals 17 and that means that 3y is equal to 17 take away 8 17 take away 8 is 9 and finally dividing by 3 we get y equals 3 so the solution to this set of simultaneous equations is going to be 2 3 x is 2 y is 3 okay example 4 again getting slightly trickier again so let's start by labeling our equations we've got equation 1 and equation 2 and drawing the line as per usual now a lot harder here we have a problem we got 12x and 6x so the coefficients aren't the same and we've got 3y and 1y oh again still no coefficients the same so what do we do well because they're equations we can actually do an operation to both sides of the equation doesn't matter which one we like and make the coefficients the same so that's the target here we're going to make the coefficients the same now looking carefully at both equations if I double this equation we'll have 12x on the bottom so I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to multiply that by 2 so I'm going to double the second one so let's write down the top equation again we still have 12x minus 3y equals 0 but now the bottom equation because I've doubled it we get 12x minus 2y equals 4 okay so I multiply everything in that equation by 2 okay let's draw a line in again now we're back to the stage that we had in the previous three examples looking at both equations we got 12x here and 12x here so we can eliminate the x terms if I take this or sorry if I take equation 2 away from equation 1 the x terms will eliminate so I'm going to do equation 1 take away equation 2 now lots of different ways we can go about this in general but I've, ch I've chosen to eliminate the x's you could have eliminated the y's we might see that a little bit later right so 12x take away 12x is 0 which is exactly what I want and minus 3y take away minus 2y be careful here let's just do it on the side we've got we got minus 3y and I'm taking away minus 2y just clearing that up we get minus 3y and a negative two negatives beside each other give us positive and minus 3y plus 2y is minus y so we get minus y equals and 0 take away 4 is minus 4 so that means that y must be equal to 4 great okay so let's substitute our value of y back into the, one of the equations so I'm going to substitute y equal to 4 and again always good to choose an appropriate equation I'm going to pick equation 2 here because the coefficient of y is 1 it's nice and handy for us so let's do equation 2 so we're subbing y equal to 4 into equation 2 bear in mind just to let you know 
you can take this value of y and sub it into any one of these equations. It does not matter. So long as you solve it correctly, you will get the same value of x. Right, so we get 6x minus the value of y, which is 4, must be equal to 2. It's this equation here I'm subbing it into, by the way. That means that 6x is equal to, and 2 plus 4 gives us 6. That means that x must be equal to 1. So the solution to this equation is 1, 4. Fantastic. Just on the side here, let's... How could we check our answer is correct? Well, all we got to do is pick our equations and substitute our values in. Supposedly, x should be equal to 1 and y should be equal to 4. So let's have a look at equation 1 here. That would be 12 times 1 minus 3 times 4, and that should be equal to 0. Well, is it? Let's see. 12, take away 12. Yes, that is in fact 0. So that works. Let's check the second one. We get 6 times 1 minus 4, and that should be equal to 2. Well, 6 times 1 is 6, and if I take away 4, that is indeed equal to 2. So that's correct. So I know that my solution, 1, 4, satisfies both equations, which means it's correct. Okay, second last example here. We've got x plus 5y equals 9, and 2x plus 3y is 11. So I'm going to start by labeling our equations. Call that equation 1 call that equation 2. Okay, looking at the coefficients of x, they're not the same, so no good here, and the coefficients of y aren't the same either. So again, we're going to have to do some sort of manipulation to make the coefficients equal of the x's or make the coefficients equal of the y's. Hopefully, with a bit of uh, analysis, you can see that if I multiply equation 1 by 2, if I double everything in equation 1, we will get 2x, which will give us the same coefficients. So, Let's double equation 1. We get 2x plus 10y. Remember, multiply everything by 2, and that must be equal to 18. So I've doubled everything in equation 1. Equation 2, leave it alone. Don't touch it. It's nice the way it is. And that equals 11. Okay, drawing a line again. This time, well, let me come back and label my equations, equation 1 and equation 2 still. Right, this time I'm going to take equation 2 away from equation 1. So I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2. What do we get? 2x take away 2x is 0, so they cancel out. That's what we wanted. 10y take away 3y leaves me with 7y. And 18 take away 11 leaves me with 7. Isn't that nice? So that implies that y must be equal to 1. 7y is 7, so y is 1. Again, we're going to substitute sub y equal to 1 into one of these equations. Let's have a look. What's easier? Hmm, I quite like equation 1 here. Why? Because it's already in terms of x for me. So I'm going to substitute y equal to 1 into this equation. Into 1. Right. So we get x plus 5 times y which we now know is 1, must be equal to 9. That means, or that implies, that's what this symbol is, implies x plus 5 must be equal to 9, which means, finally, x is equal to 9 take away 5, which is 4. So the solution to this set of simultaneous equations is 4, 1. x is 4, y is 1. x and y. Right. Very last example, trickiest of the bunch. We have a huge problem here. Let's start by just labeling our equations again. Equation one, equation two. Right, if I double this equation, or double this equation, the coefficients aren't gonna be the same. So we're actually gonna have to do an operation to both equations to solve it. So, hopefully you're able to see that. If I double equation one, so if I do equation one, times 2, and if I also do equation 2, if I multiply that by 3, we'll have the same coefficients. Hopefully you can see this. Let's just see why. 6 times 2 will give me 12, and 4 times 3, 4 times 3 will also give me 12. Essentially what we're doing is we're looking for the lowest common multiple 
of 6 and 4. So that's the smallest number that's in the 6 times table and the 4 times table. So the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4. Right, so when we go ahead and do that, equation 1 now becomes 12x plus 14y. And again, we must do the same thing to both sides. That must be 24. So we're doubling everything here. Equation 2 now becomes, because I've, I'm going to multiply everything by 3 here, we get 12x plus 9y, and that must be equal to, hopefully you can realise that 18 times 3 is 54. I know my 18 times table well. Right, draw your line again. Again, the coefficients of x are the same, so we can eliminate the x now nicely. Okay, If I do equation 1, take away equation 2. Equation 1, take away equation 2, will give me y. So equation 1, take away equation 2. 12x, take away 12x, 0. That's exactly what we wanted. 14y, take away 9y, leaves us with 5y. And this is going to be a little bit trickier. 24, take away 54, is minus 30. Okay, so 5y is minus 30. That must mean that y must be equal to minus 6. Okay, and last hurdle here. So we're going to substitute, substitute y equal to minus 6 into... Right, which equation are we going to choose? As I said before, it doesn't really matter which equation to choose, but I want to choose one that's going to make life a little bit easy for me. I'm going to choose this one here, this equation up here. So I'm going to sub it into equation 2. So we get 4x plus 3 times the value of y, which is minus 6, must be equal to 18. That implies that 4x, 3 multiplied by minus 6 is minus 18. That must be equal to 18, which tells me that 4x must be equal to 18, plus 18 is 36, which tells me that x must be equal to, well, 36 divided by 4 gives us 9. So the solution to that set of simultaneous equations is 9 minus 6. And that is it. Right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if you've got any comments, please do leave them. If you have any questions, again, please do leave them. Any requests for videos, uh, I'll do my very best to get them done when I can. Uh, and I will talk to you again sometime. Take it easy.